Okay, so now that we've created our .env file, we can actually start writing code to connect to MongoDB. Um, and this is going to be very similar um, to what we did when we first learned about how we connect to MongoDB. So this code should look somewhat familiar. Um, let's start with, so we're gonna start with route a uh, server, sorry, server.js. Um, and we're gonna need to add some code here, which is like the code we had in our other project, okay? So after Express, after we've created our Express app here, let's load the environment variables like we've done before. So this isn't new, this is similar to what we've done before. Load environment variables from the env file into process env. Look at GitHub Copilot completing my comments for me. So nice. So const.env. Oh, look, it types it all for me. I just hit tab. There you go. That's what I want. .env.config. I like that. But then we need to put in here the path. I want it to look like that. Sometimes GitHub Copilot gets ahead of us. This is something we're interested in, but not till tomorrow. So uh, we won't worry about that right now. But we do want to connect to our database. And let's see, did it guess correctly? Server database connection. Yeah, it did. And I'll show you where that file is in a second. And it will say connect DB. There, I wrote almost no code today. Very happy. Good way to start a Tuesday. Yes. Uh, up here? Yeah, you could do require.env.config. Yeah, yep, absolutely. So this path here, server database connection, is something that um, I created for us. So if we look inside the server folder, inside the database folder, there's already a connection.js file. Um, and so we're pulling this in. Um, we did some MongoDB, MongoDB work previously by connecting directly to and using the MongoDB um, node module. Um, Often we have some sort of structured data, like an object that we wanna be saving to our database. In this case, it's our journal entry object. And so rather than us writing all the code to save that object in a consistent way, we can use another node module called Mongoose. Um, and Mongoose makes it easier to bridge between JavaScript objects and MongoDB documents. And so we're going to be learning about a tool called Mongoose today um, to make our life easier in terms of connecting to MongoDB. And so just in the interest of time, and because this never really changes, this is code that you'll, you know, copy and paste um, this file into your own projects next semester. Um, I just typed it all for us and we'll just talk through it. So we require Mongoose. We... Um, have here the actual, here's the ConnectDB function that we just invoked in our server.js. Here's the definition of that function where we tried to connect to MongoDB through the Mongoose module. So there's some extra options here. Um, when we do successfully connect, we print out a message, we catch if there's an error and we exit if there is an error. And then remember when we have our separate JavaScript file that we're gonna require from a different file, we need to be clear what is exported from that module. And from this module, we're simply exporting the ConnectDB function, okay? So all of this is written, and in general, none of this needs to change, okay? So we kind of consider this boilerplate code for our web applications. All right, so we have connected to the database. This is a good start. Now that we've connected to the database, um, 
and we're using Mongoose, part of Mongoose is to create a model for our data. Um, so we are gonna do that next. Inside of the server folder, again, code that runs on the server, there is a folder called model. This is where that habits of mind JSON file was already existed for us. Um, we're gonna create a new file in the model folder. So go ahead and right click on model and say new file. And we're gonna create a file called entry.js. This is our model file for a habit of mind journal entry that we're gonna store in the database. So let's write some, let's write like a little header here. Um, we often call this a schema. A, think of the word schema is um, like a, a structured definition of, of data that we're storing in a database. So schema for a journal entry. Um, here's how it works. We first need to import Mongoose. I don't know why I like to use the double quotes. So there we go. Um, and then we're gonna create a new um, schema using Mongoose. So I'm gonna say const schema equals new Mongoose schema, that looks good. And then we're gonna put all of our stuff here. So GitHub Copilot's just guessing we want this stuff and it's not right, so we'll change it. Um, we wanna capture the date and the date is gonna consist, uh, um, so for each property within our schema, or each field within our schema, we're gonna specify the name of that field, date, the type of the data we're storing there. So we're gonna store, um, the date is of type capital D date, that's a known type with our Mongoose schemas. Um, and it required means, is this field required or not? Can we add a document to our database without specifying a value for the date? We're gonna say, no, it's required. You gotta, you gotta specify that. We also wanna capture an email. Um, that is of type string and that too is required. This is how we're gonna know whose journal entry it is. Distinguish my journal entries from your journal entries. We need to specify which habit of mind it is. That two is gonna be a string and that two is gonna be required. And we're gonna specify the content. That's the other information we fill out on that form, on that web page. It's gonna be required as well. So that is all of our stuff. So I gotta close all my parentheses and things. And that is what our construction of a mongoose schema looks like. Yes. Mongoose is um, a node module that has a bunch of functionality built into it to make it easier for us to read and write objects to MongoDB. What, a MongoDB wrapper, you said? Yeah, yeah. For like structured data, like objects. It will handle all sorts of cool things. Like if we have a JavaScript object, we'll be able to just like write it to the database without writing with a single function call. And we can like pull that object out of the database and get it as a JavaScript object, not get it as JSON with a single function call. So it just saves us time. Yeah, it's a little more like, there's nothing about a MongoDB document that's structured, right? We can put whatever we want in there. This adds a little bit of structure to it, but a little bit of structure is sometimes helpful if we're like writing a bunch of objects and we want to read them out and make sure like things are filled in the right way. Yeah, that's why I cautioned you at the beginning that we need to keep our journal entry school appropriate. <laughs> You're going to see all of them when we start displaying them. All right, now that we define the schema, we do need to create the actual model object. So I'm gonna do that, or model class there. So const entry equals mongoose.model, entry comma schema, GitHub Copilot got that correct as well. And then we need to export that 
from this file because we're going to use it elsewhere. So now we have a new class called entry um, that we can use in other files to create entry objects. All right, couple more steps and then we'll actually be writing data. Um, let's go look at router.js. We have some changes to make there. So clicking over here on router, um, we need to import, uh, require this new model class that we made, this entry class. So at the very top here after the route, I'm gonna say const entry. That's going to be the reference to the class. Require dot dot to go up one folder. Model is the subfolder. And then entry is the name of the JavaScript file. That pulls in that new entry class that we just wrote the definition for. And now we can change our post command. And then you'll see like the benefit here of using um, Mongoose. So this was the code we wrote previously just to log the data we got from the web client on the server side, which was a good incremental step. But now we'll actually create one of these entry objects um, and write it to the database. So here's how we do that. Const entry equals new entry. Okay, that's the class we imported from our model file. And when we create our new entry, we want to specify all the values we need to specify. And let's see how good Copilot did here. Date, rec body date, that sounds good. Email, rec body email. Um, we don't have the email in there, but we'll accept that and change it in a moment. Habit, rec body habit, looks good. Content, rec body content. This is fantastic. That's really close. Let's just hard code the email for now. Um, to your email. I'm typing my email. Tomorrow, we will focus on, um, hey, how do we do authentication? Um, and then we can use that for the email part. So there's how we create a new entry object. And this is the part I love. Here's the work it takes to save this object to our MongoDB database. Await, because it's asynchronous, entry.save. That's it. That automatically takes that object, that JavaScript object, writes it to the database as a new document um, and, and as, as JSON data. And we'll see what the data looks like in a moment. So super cool how that works. Yesterday, I think it was yesterday, um, I made something more complicated than it need to be than it needed to be, um, and I forgot to fix that when, when I shared that with you. So we're gonna go back and fix that mistake now before we run this code. Um, so we're gonna go back to our create entry EJS file. So sorry about this. Um, one minor thing is we're gonna need a leading slash here It's for proper rendering later. So let's add in that leading slash before IMG here. That's minor, more major. Um, I made this a lot more complicated than it needed to be. And to provide a little bit of insight then, when I was first like developing the series of lessons, I, I thought for some reason like the value of this input element needed to like not have any spaces in it. And that's not true. The value for the input element can certainly have spaces in it. In fact, if the value for this input element, instead of being this habit ID thing, if instead it's just habit, um, 
that's really nice because then we can just write it to the database and it's going to be formatted in a very nice human readable way. So we're going to get rid of this whole habit ID thing. So I'm going to change this word from habit ID to habit and I'm going to delete this whole line of code that was focused on um, creating that variable habit ID. So a little bit of a waste of our time from yesterday. Yes. Yep. Well, it's, it's all based on the delimiters, right? So whenever it sees this, it interprets all of this as JavaScript until it sees this end. And it knows we're in the middle of a for loop in this case. So as it's rendering this EJS file, it's basically just copying line by line into an HTML document is a way to think about it. So it just copies this line, it copies this line, it copies this line. And when it gets here, it's like, oh wait, I'm in a for loop. It copies all of this and then it loops and it copies all of this and it loops and it copies all of this. But as it does, does so because of these delimiters, it does the variable substitution for the values. So that's like how it interprets the EJS file as it goes. Does that answer your question? Okay. It's kind of cool. All right, let's see if this works. This one? All right, so let's actually do click on the run and debug and let's start the node server first. So I'll select node server in the pop-up. I press the little play button. The node server is now running. I'm now gonna click here and select node client, hit the play button. It's gonna launch Chrome and now that is running. So there's my Chrome window. Um, let's test creating an entry, okay? So I'm gonna click create entry. I'm gonna click on today's date. Um, today, what am I focused on today? Um, I'm going to click responding with wonderment and awe, and I'm going to type, I am impressed with the accuracy of GitHub Copilot. There's my journal entry. And then I'm going to click submit and I'm back on the main page. Let's see. If anything interesting shows up here. So server is listening. Here's the MongoDB connected part, some path requested things. Things look pretty good. Um, you don't have access to this now, but when you're working on your own project, you certainly will. And that is access to what's called Atlas. Atl Atlas is the web-based way of browsing a MongoDB database. Um, and so I'm going to refresh. Might have to log in again. Let's see. Yep. So I'm going to log in. And I'll navigate to our database. Yeah, question? For sure, yeah. You have to be a little bit smarter with how you do your queries and things, so you do more stuff on their server side and less on yours, but yeah. They have a free tier, but if you're doing something serious, yeah, you're certainly gonna be paying for it. All right, so I'm in our Node App Framework project. 
Um, and here's our cluster. And so I'm going to look at all the collections here and databases. So here is our database, Journal 2. And if I click on this, I can see I'm the only one who wrote anything so far, it looks like. Is this me? This is me. But as you run your code, it should show up here. So I'd expect like, didn't work? Maybe we need to pause and take a look at this here and see what's going on. So 